Conservative firebrand Laura Ingram is known to her millions of fans on talk radio and Fox News as a sharp-tongued, no-holds-barred critic of American politics. But how much do you really know about the controversial television host? Here's the truth about Laura Ingram. Before stoking the fires of partisan politics on the AM band, Ingram triggered a few controversies back when she was the editor of the Dartmouth Review in the early 80s. According to the New York Times, Ingram sent a reporter to secretly record a meeting of the Gay Students Association, then published a partial transcript of the meeting, including the identities of two association officials. The GSA felt this was a violation of its First Amendment rights since members were reportedly required to take an oath of confidentiality to attend. Ingram later justified the story by saying the publication was simply investigating school funding that the GSA had received, a total of $825 over two years, and that her reporter acted legally under freedom of the press, she told UPI. It seems they just have parties and talk about parties. There isn't a heterosexual group that gets funding. The story gained national attention and became a lightning rod for critics who claimed Ingram had outed her fellow students. Though she had spectacular success on talk radio and eventually became the permanent guest host for Fox News' The O'Reilly Factor, Ingram's first go-round at a solo TV project for the conservative cable station didn't go so well. Ingram's 2008 show, Just In with Laura Ingram, which attempted to blend conservative talking points with Daily Show-style humor, lasted just three weeks before getting yanked. Ingram previously fared a bit better utilizing a virtually identical format for her late 90s MSNBC show Watch It, which lasted 17 months and was shifted to three different time slots. Speaking with C-SPAN about her first foray on the small screen, Ingram said, "...it was a great time. We tried to do it like a mini-interview, a little bit like The Daily Show. It was odd, very ambitious, and a lot of fun." When the show was canceled, Ingram said she was never told why, adding, that's kind of the way MSNBC goes. She also said the experience eventually caused her to pivot to a full-time radio gig. Late Arizona Senator John McCain's daughter, Megan McCain, is now a public figure in her own right, having co-hosted the panel show Outnumbered on Fox News before landing a permanent spot at the table with the ladies of The View. But when she'd only just dipped her toe into the shark-filled waters of political punditry back in 2009, McCain tangoed with none other than Laura Ingram. According to Think Progress, Ingram then used a valley girl voice to imitate Megan and made a mocking reference to how she couldn't get cast on The Real World because, in Ingram's words, they don't like plus-sized models. She went on to slam The View host for being critical of extreme political viewpoints on both sides of the aisle. I mean, I don't even know what Megan McCain stands for. I mean, last time I checked, they don't she was like talking it. about they don't tattoos. Like this. McCain responded in a column for The Daily Beast called, Quit talking about my weight, Laura Ingram in which she questioned why Ingram deviated from the ideological discussion for a crass personal attack. Ingram responded by calling her plus-sized model's remark, a throwaway comic line that was an attempt to jab at Hollywood's obsession with stick-figure women. Years later, Adweek asked Megan how she felt about her previous feuding with Ingram, and her response was, I just want to thank her for my career. She's the person who got me national attention. That's all I have to say about that. Checkmate. If you thought all past and present Fox News hosts were automatically on the same side, think again. There doesn't even seem to be a shared bond of sisterhood between former colleague Megyn Kelly and Ingram, despite the many reasons working in the same troubled newsroom could have forged one. But for Ingram especially, there was no love lost when Kelly defected to NBC News. In her October 2017 interview with The New York Times, Ingram swiped at Kelly's now-defunct 9 o'clock hour on Today with a rather unflattering comparison, saying, "...what do you think? We're going to have a stove in the back, and we're going to have popovers? No, I won't be doing that." On air, Ingram has come for Kelly a few times, referencing the flagging ratings of Kelly's morning show and mocking her segment featuring women who have accused President Trump of sexual harassment and assault. Ingram also tweeted a variety story that pondered NBC's controversial hiring of Kelly with the question, Did NBC make a $17.5 million mistake? Yikes. Shots have not only been fired here, but full-on war has been waged, even if only one side seems to be fighting. In an interview with The New York Times, Ingram casually revealed that she talks to President Donald Trump on the phone rather frequently. She explained, Sometimes I call him, and occasionally I'll get a call. 
Ingram claimed she has phone chats with the leader of the free world a few times a month. It was a remarkable admission to make, but one that perhaps shouldn't have come as much of a surprise given the president's known TV watching habits. For the most part, he's an unabashed lover of Fox News. Add to that Ingram's early endorsement during his candidacy and it starts to make sense. Donald Trump respects us enough to tell us the hard truths about what has happened to our country. But that's not to say that Ingram is Trump's yes woman. She also pointed out to the Times that she's been critical of the president at times and that she would continue to be critical on air as she saw fit. When asked about how she thought Trump might react to her criticism, she said, He'll probably be irked. We are friends, but friends tell friends when they go off course. And I'm sure he'll tell me when he thinks I'm deviating from what's proper and thoughtful. And I'll do the same with him. For decades, Ingram has given more than her two cents on the American political process, and there may come a day when she decides to get off the sidelines. Speaking with the Sunday Times in 2013, Ingram said, I've been approached by various people to get involved, and I'm keeping an open mind about running for office in the future. Fast forward four years and Ingram's plans have not yet solidified, although she seemed to have narrowed her sights on a branch of government to try to infiltrate the legislature. Specifically, Ingram was eyeballing the seat occupied by Tim Kaine, the junior senator from Virginia, who also ran for vice president alongside Hillary Clinton. In an echo of her remarks from 2013, Ingram once again said she'd been encouraged to run by some reportedly well-connected Virginians, which she claimed to find very flattering. Although she had yet to make up her mind on whether to do so, according to CNN. A few months later, the Washington Post all but ruled out the possibility of Ingram joining the 2018 race, but it's probably safe to assume the extremely popular pundit who President Trump considered to be his press secretary hasn't given up her political aspirations just yet. Ingram was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2005 and battled for years with chemotherapy and surgery. In 2013, she spoke with talkers about being a cancer thriver, explaining that she thinks the term survivor sounds too defensive. She added, The coast is clear. I try to go on without obsessing about it all that much. It was not a pleasant experience to go through, and I treated it like training for a marathon or writing a law school essay. I powered through it and did not want people to pity me. Ingram even channeled the life-threatening struggle into another book, Power to the People, which was published in 2007. Though the book covers Ingram's typical political stomping grounds, she told Cancer Connect that it was the stories of other thrivers that inspired her to write it. Asked to counsel others afflicted with a cancer diagnosis, Ingram again referred to a cancer battle in terms of a tough assignment that shouldn't be, in her words, the defining characteristic of your life. Ingram started the Adopt a New Attitude project in response to the Russian government's retaliatory 2012 ban of all adoptions to the United States. According to the Washington Free Beacon, the former Soviet state's harsh restriction was a reaction to U.S. economic sanctions, and it resulted in the immediate stoppage of any further adoptions of Russian children to American families, including more than 300 adoptions who were already somewhere in the process. Referring to adopted children as little angels that need us, Ingram told the Free Beacon, I didn't really think all that much about adoption until I adopted. She claims she found her passion for the cause after adopting three children of her own, two boys from Russia and a girl from Guatemala. She said she hopes Adopt a New Attitude reveals what she calls great light of adoption is to the public. In January 2017, after being accused of human rights violations, Russian officials signaled that they were ready to reopen discussions on the issue and that there was potential to revert how conditions were prior to the ban. Clearly, Ingram is no fan of liberal teen activists, but she may have saved her worst attack for Greta Thunberg, the teen climate change activist in Time's 2019 Person of the Year, according to Time. Thunberg inspired 4 million people to join the global climate strike in what was the largest climate demonstration in human history. Ingram was apparently unimpressed by the achievement. The adults who've brainwashed these kids should be brought up on charges of child abuse. During an episode of The Ingram Angle that aired three days after the historic worldwide protest, the conservative host compared Thunberg to the fictional teen cult in Stephen King's classic, Children of the Corn. I can't wait for Stephen King's sequel, Children of the Climate. Yikes. Predictably, she faced instant backlash over her comments, the harshest of which came from her brother, Curtis Ingram, 
While that may sound shocking, keep in mind that Curtis had previously called Laura a monster, according to the Daily Beast, and publicly shamed advertisers on her show. Someone asked me, is that really your sister? Is she just playing a media personality? And I think it is who she has become. After Laura's Thunberg slam, Curtis headed to Twitter and didn't hold back, saying, Clearly, my sister's paycheck is more important than the world her three adopted kids will inherit. I can no longer apologize for a sibling who I no longer recognize. I can and will continue to call out the monstrous behavior and the bully commentary born out of anger. Dubbed the most listened to woman in America on political talk radio, Ingram left her radio show in 2018 to launch a podcast on the Podcast One network. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Ingram claimed that hosting a primetime television show and a three-hour radio show was just too much for her as a single parent of three. But just a year later, the podcast ended. Her last broadcast was on September 30th, 2019, and no new episodes have dropped since. The Daily Beast reported further, and yet, on her official website, Ingram has continued advertising and selling auto-renewable $49.95 per year subscriptions for a podcast that apparently no longer exists. Sources told the publication in October that the show would be coming back, but Ingram and her executive producer ignored requests for comment, and the podcast was scrubbed from her Twitter bio. In December 2019, Podcast One confirmed to The Hollywood Reporter that Ingram's podcast was over, and that her deal with them had expired, saying in a statement, Our podcast was always available free of charge, and we are not aware of this being part of any paid package. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.